Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create relationships with each of the different NPCs so they each individually can like or dislike you. It's really simple to do but it's immensely fun and will change your game hugely. So to start we need a place to store the relationships. So I'm going to open up my player and inside the variables I'm going to create a variable called relationships. I'm going to set the type to be a type of name and then I'm going to come over to the variable type at the top and I'm going to change it from a single to one map. This way we can have all the names of the individuals as the key that we look up and then the integer will be their approval rating of us. And that's all we need to do for the player there. So what we can do is we can treat this in three ways. When a character doesn't exist in relationships, they don't know who you are at all. When they do exist in it, then we can proceed on. Do they like you or do they not like you? And you can set the value of the integer however high or low you want. I'm going to go from minus 100 to 100 on mine. Zero will be you're just a commoner, but they've seen you around. 100 is they absolutely love you. Minus 100 is they are attack on side. But the first thing we need is we need a way to add a relationship to our player. Someone we can first say, oh, we've interacted with this person for the first time. So inside the functions here, I'm going to create a new function called add relationship. As an input parameter, we're going to go and take a name and it will be a type of name. And then we'll drag our relationships out and we will do a find where we plug in the name and then with a branch if it finds it then we'll just add it because we don't want to update it so does it find it false in which case we will take the relationships and we will add to it and the value will be zero because zero is we we know them but we don't we've never seen them before and the name will be our get name variable there we go now that we've got a way to add a relationship we need a way to actually call it so there are many ways you can do this just by walking up to them or your version of interaction i'm going to use the plugin narrative because i've already got it all built in so i'm going to say as soon as you walk up and begin dialogue with them it will attempt to add the relationship it would get a bit tedious if i was to add it to every single dialogue to say add the relationship add the relationship because you're going to forget at some point so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to my class settings and I'm going to find my parent class. If you haven't set a parent class up in Narrative before, simply create a new dialogue called Master Dialogue. It's that simple. Then go to Edit, Project Settings, scroll to the very bottom and find Narrative, Narrative Dialogues Editor, and set the default dialogue class to be your new Master Dialogue. It, can, it doesn't have to be anything special. And then what that means is every time you edit that master dialogue, everyone will, will inherit from it. We did it for the dice roll result video just before. So I'm going to come into the event graph here and I'm going to overwrite the function on begin dialogue here. And this will run every single time we start dialogue, meaning we, every time we start dialogue, we can tell it to add the relationship. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do get player pawn and I'm going to cast it to my player. I'm going to treat it as a pure cast because I know it's always going to be my player. And I'm going to drag off from this and I'm going to get narrative component from target. And then from here, add the relationship. But for the relationship, we need a name. And from this, since we're in narrative by default, we have access to its variables. So I can simply type get current speaker. I can split this and then I can drag the speaker ID up to here like so. And just like that, that will now add the relationship every time we begin dialogue. Just make sure that you have actually set your parent class, otherwise it won't work. Now press shift F1 and click on the player. You will see the relationships is currently empty. But if we run up to them and speak to them, you will see it says none as a relationship, which is odd because their name isn't none. There is currently a bug in narrative that is going to be fixed in the next version where it doesn't have the current dialogue as soon as begin dialogue runs because it's not set the variable in the background. So an easy fix for this at the moment is just to add a really small delay. It can just be 0.1, just like so. So as soon as the dialogue begins, it will add the relationship. Now you see if we run up to them and speak to them, it will instantly add them as a relationship. Perfect. And you can see the more NPCs I interact with, the more relationships that we form, meaning it's in one place, nice and easy to edit. So now that we've got that, we need a way to actually be able to use it in dialogue. In my case, I want to be able to get whether a player, their relationship is in a certain range or not. For my narrative, I'm going to come down into my conditions and I'm going to create a custom condition. So type of narrative condition, I'm going to call it NC check relationship. And in here, I'm going to create a variable called min value and it will be a type of integer. And I'm going to duplicate this by pressing control D and then I'm going to call it max value. And that'll be an integer as well. These are going to be the min and max as you are wanting to check. 
And then I'm going to come and overwrite my check condition event here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do in range and I'm going to make sure I choose the integer version. And then I'm going to plug that in to the check condition here. Then I'm going to drag in the min value and plug it into the min. And I'm going to drag the max value and plug it into the max like so. So now this will come and check whether the current value is between the min or the max. It will include the minimum. So if you say 10, it will check 10 and above. If you don't want it to include 10, you can just untick inclusive. Now we actually need to get the value. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get the player pawn. I'm going to cast it to the player and I'm going to right click on the arrow and make it pure cast. Then I'm going to get the relationships and I'm going to find on it. So in this find, we need to give it a text. We need to give it a tag of the relationship we're looking for. So I'm going to drag from this and I'm going to promote it to a variable because then that way we can check at any time from a different NPC. You could just drag off from narrative and get the current NPC's name, but that would only work if you're friends with them. If you go and harm a friend of theirs, then they want they're going to be angry at you as well. So this will give us the flexibility to do both. So this variable I'm going to rename to character name and then we can add a branch to here. If the branch is true, then it's found them. If it's false, then it doesn't know what they are. Then I'm gonna plug the find into the value. If it doesn't find the relationship, then it'll just use zero and act like they don't know who they are or what they are. We can use that to our benefit. And that should be it, ladies and gentlemen. So it will come in, it will get the current relationship with the character we've defined, and it'll check whether their relationship is between our specified values. And then it will return true. If it returns true, it's between it, so it will allow it. And then I'm just gonna overwrite the get graph display text, and I'm gonna append from here. So I'm going to say is character name between value min and max. So is Dan between zero and 50? And I can compile and save. And now what we can do in our dialogue is I'm going to come and delete this high out because I don't want it there. And we're going to drag off from here and give him a multitude of replies depending on what your relationship with him is. So in the conditions, I'm going to add a condition here saying check relationship. And I will say if the min value is zero and the max value is zero, basically, is it zero? And the character name is my current character name. So if it's zero, then I can make him say why, hello there. I don't think we have met before. I am Lucius. Who might you be? And then we can go on and have other dialogue with him. However, we can add another node down here with the same con check condition. But this time we will say the min value is one between 50. And then his name will still be the same. And we will say, hello again. How are you doing on this bright sunny day? So then he will remember you. And then we can do it one more time down here where we say between 51 and 100 and we will say oh look it's my good friend how are you today and then what we can do from the opposite way is now drag it and go into the minuses so if they dislike you so I can come and say check relationship and I'll say the minimum value is minus one to minus 50 where I can say oh you again what are you doing here and then I can do one more where I say between minus 51 to minus 99 where I say, look, I told you not to come here anymore. Go away. Perfect. And you might have wondered why I'm doing 99 with this one. And that's because we're going to leave 100 blank. Meaning if you have a relationship of minus 100 with him, he'll just outright not talk to you anymore. So now if we begin and run up to the NPC here, we'll click on the play using Shift F1 so we can see it. We can see we have no relationship with him. We'll speak to him and go, why, hello there. I don't think we've met before. I am blah, blah, blah. Who might you be? Oh, I've just killed him. Well, if he didn't hate us before, he certainly hates us now. So I've just stopped him from dying. So now if we run up to him again, and this time not kill him, you will see he's not met us before. So he's asking who we are. So we'll check the relationship and it will say zero. Okay, so he's not met us before. So I'm gonna set the relationship to say 10. We've done some good deeds for him. So if we speak to him again, you will say, hello again, how are you doing on this bright sunny day? So one slight change we'll need to make is due to the way we are checking the relationship here, the min and max need to be inverted if we're doing negatives. So instead of the min being 51, we need to make it 99 and then the max will have to be 51 because it's all drawing from zero. And that's all you need to do. So now if we run up to him and have a negative relationship with him, so if we run up and talk to him now, he'll say he doesn't know who we are. So we can speak to him. And if we set the relationship to minus 70, so strong dislike, and he'll say, look, I told you not to come around here anymore. Go away. And then finally, if we set it to a minus 100 or anything above, he'll just outright ignore us because he doesn't like us. There we go. He won't even speak to us anymore. Perfect. But you might think, 
Now that's all well and good, but nobody's going to go into the variables and change the relationships. So that's where we need to make it so the dialogue or actions we do affect the relationship with this NPC. So I'm going to come into my narrative events here and I'm going to create a new event. It'll be a type of narrative event and I will call it any update relationship. Inside here, I'm going to add a variable of a type name and I will call it character name just like before. And I'll add another variable of value and this will be an integer like so. And that'll be the name of the relationship we're updating and the value of what we're doing, such as plus 10 or negative 10. So I'm gonna overwrite the execute event function here and I'm gonna go back to my check relationship and I'm gonna and I'm gonna copy all of this find node down here, like so. So it already finds our character's name and their relationship. And I'm gonna branch off because if they are not found, then we don't need to update it. If it's false, then it means it's not found, so we can just return true. However, if it is found, then we need to update it. So I'm going to drag from the relationships and I'm going to do add like so. And the way a map works in Unreal is if it exists, then it will update it. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So I'm going to add that to there like so. For the name, we need our character name. So I can drag that in and plug it in there. And then for the existing value, we just need to get the current relationship of that NPC, which is from our find down here. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to promote this to a local variable and I will call it current value and I'll just populate it up here before we go to the branch. If it doesn't exist, it'll just return zero. So now we can come down here with a current value and I can add to it the value that we want to modify and then I can append that there and then I can just return like so. And that's it. So it'll come in, find the relationship, set the current value as a temporary holding, return if it's got nothing to do, otherwise it will increment the value and add it. So now the final thing is to just update get graph display text where it'll say modify Dan's relationship by minus one, 10, 20. And that's all we need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's as simple as coming in and wherever we've got dialogue. So when he says he's not met us before, we'll drag off our play response and we'll just add it add to him saying it's nice to meet you and then just in this example i'll add the event update relationship where i will simply say for this character name because we were so polite he wants us to have a relationship of 10. there we go because we were polite otherwise we can come up and say you smell right it'll give us a minus 10 relationship like so and it's that simple ladies and gentlemen so now we can, we can walk up to them and speak to them they'll say bye hello we've not met before and if we check the variables you can see we have a relationship of zero. If I say it's nice to meet you, he'll give us a relationship of 10 because we've been polite. And now if we speak to him again, he'll say, hello again, how are you doing on this bright sunny day? Perfect. However, if I walk up to him and begin the relationship again, and this time I will say, you smell, and he'll just take us to go away. And if we speak to him now, he'll say, oh, you again, what are you doing here? Because we said he smells. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We now have a relationship with this character that can dynamically change the dialogue and it can be affected anywhere. You can make them attack you on site. You can do a quest for them. If you attack them, you could make the relationship go negative and you can set it to any amount you want. So I have this dialogue for this character called Sextus that when you speak to him, he says he's got some bandits and he's taken care of. So what I've done is I've modified the, the relationship to say, if I accept the quest, he'll give us a 10 relationship. But then I proceeded to go to the quest and once I completed it, then I increased it by yet another 10. So you can see if I run up to him now, you can see we don't currently have a relationship with him. But if I speak to him, we get a relationship of zero and I'll say, do you have any services required? He's got some bandits. Do you want to get rid of them? We'll say yes. You see, we've got a relationship of 10 with him already. You can see now if I come up and kill all the bandits, it will say go back to him and report it. So you can see I'm here. If I speak to him now, he will say, I've taken care of the bandits. He'll say, good news, I will inform the villagers. And we have another relationship with him, meaning we can change that dialogue to do whatever we want. We can have discounts from shops just by calling the check there. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other ideas for good tutorials, let me know. And I will see you next time.